Well, uh, I got voted on to the talk about the passions team, and I didn't prepare much, but I got one that um, I don't think I need to prepare a lot to speak about. It's serving, serving. And um, just start off on a person, just a, a real uh, selfish level. And the Lord knows that we have selfish tendencies, and he's got carrots dangling out in front of us left and right because he knows how to motivate us. Amen? Rewards in heaven even. So I find that when I get involved with serving, I make friends, I get out of the house, I get out of my problems, I have a few laughs, and I get some good things done. You know, I'm, we're usually not out serving in a bar somewhere. We're serving somewhere where there's light and hope and life going forth. So I get to talk to you about serving. And uh, I have, um, if you know me, I didn't bring one verse, so just hang on. Um, from Mark 10, 45, we read, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. So the Lord Jesus is our ultimate model, isn't he? His image is whose we are being transformed into from glory to glory. He is the express image of God, and we are being transformed into his likeness. We're even told that when we ultimately stand before him and see him as he is, We'll know him, even as we are known, because we will be like him. And so we are given an opportunity to realize that he is calling us to walk after him now in this whatever proving ground it is in the body. Before our spirit goes on to be with him forever, we have a proving ground. We have a time of testing and growing and learning. So it's important to follow after him. And he served. He came to serve, literally to... He went ahead and gave his life as a ransom for many, which is you and you and you and me and you and you and them. So the next verse is 1 Peter 4.10. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. So each gift that one, we have is a grace from God, a varied grace that he has adorned our life with. And we can use these gifts to serve him. His gifts are without repentance. You, can, you might be a great singer and you never sing one song for God. You'll still be a great singer, but you will have wasted your gift when the time comes for all these things to have an account given for them. And we are warned that that day does wait ahead of us. And the last verse I brought is Colossians 3, well, two verses, 23 and 24. Whatever you do, do it heartily. As to the Lord and not to men. Because you know what? Men really don't always deserve it, do they? But the Lord Christ always does. Amen. Now back to the verse. Knowing that is as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ. So whenever you get up and go out, it's always inconvenient. My flesh doesn't want to. But when my spirit rises up and we go forth to do something for Jesus, be in his hands and feet among the people that we live, you know, that he's placed us with, all kinds of good things happen in the kingdom, happen in the lives of others. We're modeling what the Lord walked out for us. It is the Lord Christ whom we serve. And we're told that we have rewards for these things, that moth and rust and thieves can't get a hold of and do a thing too, and they await us there. And so I would encourage you to serve the Lord this year. All these other passions are things that you can do for your improved life with the Lord. There's so much we want to do for everybody else, right? And we want them to do for us. But sometimes we just have to do something for ourselves and seek the Lord. And he says, if you seek me, you will find me. If you search for me with all your heart. And these are seven easy things we can do to seek the Lord, and they're measurable, and we will see great gain. And I wish you a blessed year doing these things. When we get together again next year at this time, should the Lord tarry, what a wonderful set of testimonies we'll have. Amen?